forms in psychic attack. Thought forms are very, very common in psychic attack. Now, again, with these, you might see knives and all sorts of things that people send, but in psychic attack, they will be two-dimensional. So if you think about it, past life stuff is three-dimensional. The psychic attack stuff is two-dimensional. So think about the shape you're seeing, where you're seeing it, etc. What is it that the attacker is intending? One of the classics is a knife between the shoulder blades at the back. You know, I, I feel as if I've been knifed in the back is quite a common expression. Somebody stabbed me in the back. So think about that. So the intention of the attacker might not be to actually have a knife and imagine it in your back, but the stab in the back will be seen or felt by you as a knife in the back. If you see symbols, etc., that you're, you don't know what they are, so they're not a traditional symbol, it's just a symbol of some kind, you would do the same thing as you would do with any other thought form. You can put your hand in it and go, okay, what is this? Because again, it will have the program running within it, yes? So you can see or sense the symbol, put your hand in it and go, what is this? Oh, um, right, it's an attack from X, Y, and Z, and it's to attack this, it's to block that, it's to stop them doing this, it's to make them ill, it's to block this particular chakra, it's to stop a relationship. Yes, it's to stop money coming in and out. It can be all sorts of things. But because it's a thought form, it, again, it will hold the program. The thing about thought forms under psychic attack is psychic attack works on the basis of somebody sends it and you accept it. So if you get somebody comes to you who's under psychic attack, one of the questions I always ask them is, okay, why is this person sending this to you? Why do you feel that they're sending it to you? And my next set of questions is around why do you accept it? Why are you accepting their attack? Because people need to understand that for somebody to attack them, they need to be accepting it. They need to be catching the ball that's thrown at them. Because if they're not accepting it, then it's only really a very, very skilled practitioner who would be able to send you an attack that you weren't able to defend. So if somebody's under psychic attack, look with them at their energy management. That's the key thing. How are they managing their energy? What are they using for protection? What are they thinking around that? Because if they go into fear or into anger, they're immediately going to invalidate their protection. Uh, right, so the other thing that you can also find is psychic attack created by yourself. You'd be surprised how many people do this. Um, one of the things that you can get in your energy field is a thought form of the person that you say is attacking you. So psychic attack, you've got to think about how long has it been there? Is it still active? Because sometimes people will send a psychic attack with a thought form, you will find the thought form and when you look at it, when you put your hands in it, you go, well, yeah, it's been there for quite a while, but there's, there's no activity there. It's not active anymore, so I can quite happily just get rid of it. Yes, so you would take it out of the energy field, put it in your psychic dustbin. You might take it out and hand it up and wait for somebody to come and get it. You might dissolve it in light. You might do anything else. If you are treating thought forms, which are psychic attack, of entities, anything that's been created, summoned, etc. You think about, well, how has it been there? Who sent it? Why is it there? Was the attack, in, if it's a psychic attack, was it intentional? Was it unintentional? What's it actually doing with the person themselves? So when you clear the thought form, they will suddenly say, oh my God, I used to have a pain there and it's gone now. Or I used to feel this and it's gone now. I used to feel as if I had a cap on the top of my head, but it's gone now. You know, all sorts of things that people don't realise have been the impact of them being under this psychic attack. And then make sure that you do a healing for the person to make sure that they're 
energy system is back in balance, that if you've pulled anything out of their energy field that you've channeled light in to fill any gaps, any voids that you've made and so on, and then do the normal sort of, you know, ground, close down, etc., and then talk to them at the end and ask them to notice how they feel. Did they feel anything happening during the treatment? Did they feel anything after the treatment? Um, and get them to monitor how they feel over the next few days. Get them to keep up their protection. So talk to them about protection techniques so that they've got something that they can work with. 